thank you so much for joining us for Bible study on tonight. We just thank and praise God for allowing us to come to you again on tonight. Our scripture tonight will come from 1 Peter, the fifth chapter, verses 6 through 10 in the New Living Translation version. That's 1 Peter, chapter 5, verses 6 through 10. And it reads, So humble yourselves under the mighty power of God, and at the right time, he will lift you up in honor. Give all your worries and cares to God, for he cares about you. Stay alert. Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Stand firm against him and be strong in your faith. Remember that your family of believers all over the world is going through the same kind of suffering as you are. Verse 10 says, In his kindness, God called you to share in his eternal glory by means of Christ Jesus. So after you have suffered a little while, he will restore, support, and strengthen you and he will place you on a firm foundation. This scripture tells us that God is going to bless us in his own timing. And more than ever, we need the Lord, we need God in order just to stay alert. We need him to help us to stand firm. The word says that after we have suffered a little while, God is going to restore, support, and strengthen us and place us on a firm foundation. More than ever, we need the Lord and we love God. More than ever before, Lord, I love you. More than I love you now more than ever before. Help me sing more than ever before. Lord, I love you more than ever before. Lord, I need you more than ever. I love you now more than ever before. Now in Spanish. Más que nunca, Señor, yo te amo. Más que nunca, Señor, te necesito. Más que nunca, Señor, quiero Father God, we thank you, Lord. We bless your name. 
God, we honor you today for you are good and you are God. Lord, we thank you, Father God, for another privilege, another honor, another great opportunity just to look to you, just to praise you, to honor you, and bless your holy name. God, we thank you for another Bible study moment. We thank you, Father God, that we have the privilege of walking in your word and hearing from you. Now bless these moments, Father God, that we will walk with you in such a way that we will hear from you, that you will speak to us, that we will obey you, Father God, that we will follow your commandments. And bless us, Father God, as we come forth in your word, that your word will be honored by us so much so that we will keep your commandments. We will walk in your will and your way. So much so, Father God, that others will see you in us and glorify your name. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. More than, more than ever, Lord, Lord, we love you. God, we praise you. Lord, we need you. We need you, Lord. More than ever, Lord, we love you, Lord. We thank you more than ever. Hallelujah to the Lamb. We thank God for who he is and what he's already done. Tonight for Bible study, we're moving to 1 John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5. Tonight, we will be looking at verses 1 through 5. That first pericope in chapter 5. The Apostle John is speaking. He's teaching. and He's talking directly to believers. And he's making some emphasis tonight of what we ought to believe as we walk in God, as we live in him, as we are born again. We, he want to assure to us that we know why we're born again, how we're born again. Uh, we need to know uh, what we ought to be doing while we're born again. And that's what chapter five leads us to talk about tonight. First John chapter five. Let me thank all our visitors for visiting with us tonight. Thank all our members for showing up in Bible study. We thank you for being a part. Thank you for honoring God and honoring God's word on tonight. First John chapter five. We begin verse number one in verse number five. Uh, if, when you found it, you will discover these words. It says, whosoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. Whosoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. Whosoever, anybody who believes that Jesus is the Christ, this word Christ means that he's the Messiah. He's the anointed one. He's the one that the Jews have been waiting for his arrival. And we must believe that he is the Christ. He has already come. He's already been here. He's already left and he's still here all in one. He has been here. He has walked these mundane shores. He is the Messiah. He's the Christ. He's the one that has come to rescue us from this world. Jesus Christ has walked on planet Earth. He has already been here. He was born of a virgin named Mary. He got off in a place called Judea. Uh, he got off and they laid him in in a hog trough or a manger, as we call it. He uh, got off in Bethlehem of Judea. He walked these mundane shores. He did good to all mankind. He healed, he raised, he blessed us. Even when he saw us doing what was wrong, he still blessed us, even though he knew that we would not keep his commandments as we should. He still blessed us. He was born of a virgin called Mary. Jesus is the Christ. The text declares whosoever believes that Jesus is the Christ. He is the anointed one. This word Christ means the anointed one. We say that men are anointed, but Jesus Christ is the anointed one. He is the anointed one. So the text declares that whosoever believes that Jesus is the Christ, he is God in the flesh. We must believe him. He is born of God. Once you believe in the son of God, Jesus, the Christ, 
his death, burial, and his, re his resurrection, that he is the anointed one, he is the Messiah, then you are born of God. We go through the process of what we call leading people to Christ. And we do that as a testimony. We do that so that men can know that they are coming to Christ and so that we are aware of those who have come to Christ. The text declares the moment one believes, the moment one believes in Christ, he is born of God. Whosoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. He's born again. She's born again. Regardless of your age, regardless of your background, when you surrender to the belief that Jesus is the Christ, you are born again. When you surrender, the text declares whosoever, meaning anybody who believes that Jesus is the Christ. You must believe that Jesus is the Christ. You must believe in him who is Jesus the Christ. You must believe in this Jesus of Nazareth, Jesus of Galilee, who walked uh, through Galilee, Jesus the Christ. Once you believe him, you are born of God. You are born again. You have the new birth experience. The condition of being born of God makes you a child of God. Look at the text it says, Whosoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God and everyone who loves him who begot also loves him who is begotten of him. Everyone who believe him who is begot. Everyone who believe Jesus. Everyone who believed Jesus, we know that Jesus is God's only begotten son. This word begotten in John chapter three and verse 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. This word begotten simply means God's only unique son. It simply means God's only son. It means that God's one of a kind son. So when you believe in the begotten one, when you love him, everyone who loves him, who is begotten, also loves him who is begotten of him. So when you love Jesus, who is begotten of God, and then you love those who have been begotten by Jesus, then you, are, you have evidence that you are born of him. There is evidence you have you have made a statement. You have gotten to a point where, first of all, you believe Jesus. You believe that he's the son of God. As you believe that he's the son of God, you believe that he is the Christ. And as you believe that he's of Christ, you become born of God, meaning that you become one of the children of God. And as you believe him, and everyone who loves him who begot, everyone who, who loves Jesus, also love him who is begotten of him. The begotten of him are those who have been saved. In other words, now we are brothers and sisters of Christ. And because we believe Jesus Christ, because we love God, because we love Jesus Christ, then we also love others who are born again. So we are, we believe and we believe Jesus Christ. We love God. We love Jesus Christ. And since we have love for God, since we have love for Jesus Christ, then we love everyone. We love him. The text declares we love our brothers and our sisters who are begotten of him. When you're saved, you learn to love people. When you're born again, you know that you're not the only one born again. When you're saved, you have brothers and sisters of Christ. And we all are brothers and sisters. 
Those of us who are born again, we are born of God. And because we are born of God, now we love those who are born of him. Let's look at verse number two. By this we know that we love the children of God. Because we are begotten of God. Jesus is God's only begotten son. Now by this we know that we love the children of God. How do we know it? Look at the next part of it. it says, when we love God and keep his commandments. First of all, verse one d- demonstrates to us that Jesus Christ is the only begotten son of God. He's this word begotten, only unique son, only one that God has only unique son. We all are children of God. We are all who are born again, are born, are born of God and we are born again souls. Therefore we ought to love each other. Verse two says by this, we know we, we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. Now he says in verse one, we love each other. But then he says in verse two, we know we love each other. We know we are born again. We know we love the children of God when we love God and keep God's commandments. What he's saying to us today is because we love God, we will keep his commandments. The word commandments is his instructions, his rules, his his regulations, his teaching, his doctrine. So as we we love God, we keep God's commandments. As we love each other, we love what God has instructed us to do. We keep his commandments as we walk in God, as we keep God's commandments. It's evidence to everybody else that we have love one to the other. It is evident because we keep his commandments. It did not say Keep my commandments if you like them. It didn't say keep God's commandments because God has just blessed you. It didn't say keep God's commandments because it allows you to do what you want to do. It does say when we love God and keep his commandments, then there's proof that we love the children of God. We know this, we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep God's commandments. In other words, it all goes together. We cannot show forth our love for the children of God unless we show forth love for God. We cannot show forth love for God unless we keep God's commandments. So we love the children. We love God. And therefore, we keep God's commandments. It didn't say when you love each other because somebody else loves you. It did not say that you show forth love for those that gives you something, those who give you something. It did not say that you show forth love for them who are on your side, who defend you in an argument. But it did say that it shows forth your love for God when you love each other. It shows forth your love for each other when you keep God's commandments. Verse number three. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments. John says in John chapter four, that God is love. And because God is love, His attitude is one of love. His attributes demonstrate love. God is love and we are a part of God because we are his children. We are the children of God. And so for this is the love of God that we keep his commandments. So now we have the love of God. And because we have the love of God, we're going to keep his commandments. I know, I understand, I hear you right now. You're saying, but preacher, you don't do everything right. You're saying, we can't do everything right. And I understand, we're walking around in the flesh. We still have a sin nature. We still have fleshly bodies. But our goal, our target, our efforts 
are set aside to keep God's commandments. You don't just live willy nilly. You don't just walk and do whatever you want to do. You structure your life around keeping God's commandments. Verse three says, for this is the love of God. What is the love of God? That we keep his commandments. We love God. God loves us. We keep God's commandments. God first loved us. We love God. So we show forth our love for him as we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome. He says his commandments are not burdensome. These commandments that God gives us, they should not burden us. The word burdensome means grievous. The word burdensome means to be heavy. The word burdensome means to be weighty. So the text declares, John says that God's commandments are not to be considered burdensome, not be considered grievous, not to be considered weighty, are not heavy. So God's commandments ought not be heavy and his commandments are not weighty, are not burdensome. You know, things become weighty when we don't want to do it. I mean, we just don't want to follow it. We just don't want to keep the commandments. And it's amazing to me, some of the simple things that God asks us to do, we just won't do it. One of the things, serve. Another thing, love. Another thing, follow leadership. Another thing, stop gossiping. These things are not burdensome. God is not asking us to do something hard, something weighty, something heavy. The text declares, John writes to this church, he says to the church, even of the 21st century, that God's commandments are not burdensome. They're not heavy. They're not weighty. Because it's of God. Jesus says, my burdens are light. He makes our, our burden easy. Now, when you try to do it on your own, it becomes heavy. It becomes weighty. Whenever we're talking to somebody and they always have a complaint about the Bible and a complaint about the people of God, a complaint about how they, they know they should love people and love the children of God, but it's just hard to do, it's because they're trying to do it in themselves. And when you're trying to do things in yourself and you're trying to do things in your flesh, it become burdensome. It become pressure. But to keep God's commandment, it says in his commandments are not weighty. They're not burdensome. They're not something that you got to just frown at every day. The Bible teaches that the way of the transgressor is hard. The way of the sinner is hard. The way of the transgressor is devastating. The way of the transgressor is weighty. The way of the transgressor is burdensome. The little simple things that we do in life cause us burdens. But if we just turn to God, if we would just turn to God, these commandments that God has given us will not be weighty, it would not be heavy. These, these commandments that God gives us should not be a burden for us to follow. Verse four says, for whatever is born of God overcomes the world. As I was studying this, I, I looked at the word whatever, and I'm reading from the New King James Version, for whatever, I looked at the word whatever, and, and it looks like God is talking about things as well. When I looked up the word whatever, it talks about all things. It talks about humans and things. So look at what he says. Verse number four. First, 
First John chapter five, verse number four, for whatever is born of God overcomes the world. If you're born again, you can overcome this world. Whatever is born of God, it doesn't matter if it's male or female. It doesn't matter if it's an adult or child. You have the ability to overcome this world. You have the ability to overcome this, this cosmos, this arrangement of things. The word world means this arrangement of things. The word world means this authority that the devil has spellbinded people in this world. He says you can be an overcomer. Paul says it like this. We are more than conquerors. This word overcome means to prevail. The word overcome means to overpower. The word overcome means to conquer. To be victorious. The word overcome. You can prevail over this world. You see, when we were saved, we were saved three ways. Number one, we were saved from the penalty of sin. Number two, we were saved from the power of sin. Number three, we are saved from the presence of sin. First of all, we are saved from the penalty of sin, meaning that we don't have to die. We will, if we're born again, we will not die and go to hell. The penalty for sin is death, physical death and spiritual death. Adam and Eve took care of the physical death and the spiritual death for us. They made sure in the 21st century, we're going to physically die and spiritually die. Sin separates us from God. This is spiritual death. You see, man was created by God. Had they not sinned, they could have lived from now on. But since Adam and Eve sinned, we're going to leave here one day. We're going to die one day. We're going to get out of here one day. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust, and earth to earth. Our bodies will go back to the dust, we'll go back to the earth from which we came. We're going to physically die because of our sin nature. But we also, as we sin, we spiritually separate ourselves. We spiritually die. And as we spiritually die, we are separated from God. We can't get to God. God can't get to us, but through Jesus. It says to us, we must believe that Jesus is the Christ. He's the one who has come to bless us. He's the one who has come to separate us. His name is Jesus. He says, verse number four, first John chapter five, verse four. For whatever, whoever, or whatever, whatever being is born of God overcomes the world. We have power. So first of all, we are saved from the penalty of sin. We don't have to die and go to hell. We will not die and go to hell. Secondly, we're saved from the power of sin. We are overcomers. We are conquerors. We don't have to submit to the power of sin. We submit to the power of sin by choice. We are not made to. It's our choice. The Bible teaches that when man sin, he is led astray by his own fleshly desires. It's not that the devil made, it, made us do it. It's because of our innermost desires. We want to do it. Because we walk around with a sin nature. Because we still have this sin nature, we really love to sin. Sin is a part of us and sin nature rises up every now and then. And it doesn't matter how long you've been born again. Because if you've gotten to the point where you think you're so saved and been saved so long, you are fooling yourself. The devil hears you. The devil sees you. The devil reacts to your attitude. And he's looking to exploit your sin nature. But we are overcomers. We don't have to give in to sin. We can walk away. We can flee. The Bible teaches that we ought to flee our lustful desires, our, our selfish desires, our lust. We can flee from it. We are overcomers for 
whatever is born of God, if you're saved of God, if you're born of God, if you've been renewed of God, you overcome the world. You overcome the world. You are overcomer. I say the people who are, who are about to give up, don't give up. People who are about to give in, don't give in. People who are on their last thread, don't give in. Don't give out. You're overcomer. Great benefits come when you're born again. Great benefits take place when you have a life in Christ. You have great benefits when, when God has called you his own, when you are born of God. Whoever, whatever, anything, anybody who is born of God overcomes this world. This word overcome means that you're victorious. The songwriter says, all I do is win, win, win. Even when it looks like I'm not winning, I'm winning. Paul says that, and we know that all things work together for the good to them that love the Lord and to them that are called according to his purpose. Even when it looks like we're not winning, we're still winning. Even when it looks like the devil is in charge, we're still winning. Even when it looks like the imps are, are beating us down, we are still winning. And his commandments are not burdensome for whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. The walk that we have, the life we live is a faith walk. Every day we got to trust God for it. Everything we pray to receive, we got to trust God for it. Everything that we want, we have to trust God for it. That's why it's important that we make sure, very sure, that we have the right motives when we pray. We need to make very sure that once God bless us, we will give it back to God. We must make very sure that as God bless us with what we want, we will trust God with it because this is the testimony we have. And that testimony is our victory. And the victory of overcoming this world is our faith. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world. The only way we can have victory, the only way we can be victorious is through our faith. It's our faith that brings us into victory. It is our faith that makes us overcomers. It is our faith in Jesus Christ that gives us the victory regardless of what goes on around us. I know you've been praying a long time. I, I know you've been trusting God a long time. And guess what? You got to trust him till Jesus gets back. And let me tell you, the truth of the matter is, if it ain't one thing, it's another. By the time this is fixed, something else pops up. By the time this is done with, something else shows up. By the time you get this on track, then something else happens. Let me just share with you. We have the victory. And our victory, in our conquering of this world, our overcoming of this world, is strictly depending on our faith. And your faith is, from the time you desire it, to the time God delivers it, you must have faith. From the time you pray for it, from the time God drops it off or drops it into your lap, you got to pray for it. And you got to trust God for it. As you trust God, as your faith grows, God is able to bless you even more. Don't be one whom God has blessed the last time who won't trust him this time. When God blesses you, he's setting you up for more blessings. When God uh, gives you a little bit of success, a little bit of victory, he's setting you up for a great victory. When God wakes you up 
That may be a small thing to you, but he's setting you up for the major. But you have to trust him. This belief, this trust, this faith in God brings us into authority. It brings us to overcome. It brings us to conquer. And we are able to conquer regardless of what others say. Regardless of what others believe, our faith blesses us to focus on God and worship him and trust him. And this is the victory. This is the victory. This is the overcoming. This is the victory that has overcome the world. Our faith. If we're going to overcome this world, if we're going to be victorious in this world, if we're going to be successful as far as God is concerned, it's going to take our faith. We have to put our faith, our trust in the almighty God. He is the only one. This victory is our faith. This overcoming process is through our faith. We have to walk in faith every day of our life. We have, God, I'm trusting you again. When you, when you leave your house, if you think somebody's going to break in and you say, God, I want you to dispatch the angels to watch over me. Dispatch the angels to watch over my house. Lord, I'm trusting you. Dispatch the angels to watch over my car as I walk away. And then some of you angels, you all come go with me. I'm trusting you. It is God that we put our faith in. And so now I hear what you're saying. You're saying, preacher, I asked God to watch over my house and somebody still broke in. It's happened to me, too. And in the midst of going through what others go through, in the midst of you praying and asking God to walk with you and to protect your stuff, protect you, you still have to have faith when it doesn't turn out the way you want it to. You got to have victory. And the victory comes through our faith. Walk with him. Trust him. And sometimes faith is what we called a delay. If you have it, you don't have to trust God for it. If it's right there at your fingertips, there's no need for faith. But when you have faith, you trust in God to deliver what you can't deliver for yourself. And let me share with you, there are some times, there are some places, there are some things that you will go through that you can't pull off on your own. Matter of fact, your smooth talking won't get you there. As a matter of fact, your degree is not sufficient. Your background won't get you through. It takes the favor of God. And when you have the favor of God, you get there and your favor grows when your faith grows. How do our faith grow? Our faith grows by the word of God. When you pray, you ought to pray over the word and you ought to pray the word. Pray over the word. Lord, bless this word to speak to me. Bless this word to fill me. Bless this word to consume me. Saturate me with your word. Give me wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of this, your word. I'm praying over the word. And then the second thing, I have to pray the word. I want to remind God as if God has forgotten, God never forgets. I want to tell God what God has told me in his word. And in order for me to be spiritually correct and biblically sound, then I have to study to know the context and the content. So I'm going to pray the word. Lord, you said in your word, Lord, you said in your word, and we recite God's word to God. And we become victorious. I know somebody's looking at listening to me now and looking at me now and saying, but preacher, I've done all that. Well, that's when your faith kicks in. You have to have faith that God can see you through. The thing about going through is that you're going through. That means that you're not going to be there forever. But you have to have faith in it. Don't give up. Don't give out. And don't give in. Our faith. Faith 
give us the victory. Our faith makes sure we have the victory. Our faith makes us overcome us. And when you have faith, you are, you are trusting God for what you can't see. You're trusting God for what you can't feel. You're trusting God for taking you somewhere you've never been. You're trusting God. If you trust GPS, you need to trust God. And every now and then, deep down within, the Holy Spirit speaks to us while we're going the wrong way. I used to have a pickup truck. When the GPS first came out, it was called OnStar because GMC and Chevrolet, they, they tied in, they, they united with OnStar. And you could put the address in and OnStar would tell you, OnStar would tell you where to take right, where to take left. It'll tell you how many miles you got to go. And when you exit, before you get there, OnStar says, you have left the planned route. And then OnStar will begin to tell you, make a, a safe and immediate U-turn. And it, it reminds you, OnStar reminds you, make a U-turn that is legal, make a U-turn that is safe, and then it will put you back on the right track. The Holy Spirit speaks to us, but we got to trust him. And when we get off track, the Holy Spirit says, you have left the plan route. Make a legal and safe U-turn. Go the other way. It never says make a 360 degrees turn. It wants you to make a 180 degree turn. When you're going wrong, turn, go the other way and go right. Our victory comes through our faith. Verse five says, who is he who overcomes the world? He's always, he already told us that we, we overcome the world. Then he asks the question, who is he that overcomes the world? Then he gives the answer. But he who believes that Jesus is the son of God. He asks the question, who is he who overcomes the world? But he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Who is he that overcomes? Who is he that, that have prevailing power? Who is he that have supernatural power? Who is he who overpowers this world? Who is he that conquers this world? And then he tells us, only the ones who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. If you believe that Jesus is the son of God, if you believe that Jesus died for your sins, if you believe that Jesus rose from the dead, if you believe that Jesus is the Messiah who has come to rescue us, then you can overcome this world. And all the things that I said is the same thing, believing that Jesus is the, the Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one. He is the one who gives us the victory. He's the one who overcomes the world. But we must believe that he is the son of God. That's a good invitation point right there. The fact of the matter is we must believe that Jesus is the son of God. We must believe that Jesus gave his life as a ransom for you and for me. We must believe that Jesus Christ died on a hill called Calvary. We must believe that he died on a tree. We must believe that Jesus Christ was buried in a borrowed tomb. We must believe that Jesus rose from the dead. And once we believe this story of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, believing that he's the son of God who gave his life a voluntary death, he gave his life. No one took his life. He laid it down for his friends like you and me. If you've never trusted Jesus Christ as your savior, you need to believe the story that Jesus laid down his life for you. The good news is not only did he lay it down, he rose early that third day morning. He got up for you and for me. The same Jesus who died, the same Jesus who was buried, 
same Jesus rose from the dead. John says in John chapter 5, verses 1 through 5, we have the victory because of him. The problem is many times we are born again, but we don't realize the victory we have in Jesus Christ. We have the victory in Jesus Christ. The fact that he died for our sins, was buried in a borrowed tomb and rose from the dead. We become the children of God. We are able now to love other children of God. Jesus says that they will know that you are my disciples by your love. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. You need to know Jesus right now and you can get to know him. Will you trust him? Will you believe him? Will you be victorious? Will you become one of the children of God? By believing in the Son, that the Son is the Son of God. If this is you and you would like to get to know Jesus and you would like to be victorious and you would like to be an overcomer, you would like to overpower this world, Will you bow your head with me right now and you can get to know him just as he is? Just a simple prayer. Just bow your head with me and repeat this prayer after me and invite Jesus Christ into your life. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. We believe if you prayed this prayer honestly, Believing that Jesus is the Son of God, that He died for your sins and rose from the dead. We believe that you're on your way to heaven. Whether you die soon or whether you die later, you're on your way to heaven. We want to rejoice with you, so we want you to inbox us and let us know that, that you've received Jesus Christ in this broadcast so we can rejoice with you, we can celebrate with you. There are others of us who struggle. We struggle with what John talks about. We struggle with loving one another. We struggle with loving our brothers and sisters in Christ. We struggle with, with just overcoming this world. We don't realize that we have power to overpower the world, to overcome the world. We don't realize we have the victory, but we have victory in Jesus the Christ. I want to pray with you and pray with me. I want to pray for us that we realize who we are in Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, we come now. We ask you, Father God, to bless each of us. Bless our lives. We, we're born again. We're saved. We trust you for some things, but Lord, we struggle with others. We pray, Father God, that you bless us to get to know you in, in a real way, in good times and bad times. Lord, somebody right now is struggling with the crisis of belief. We pray that you bless them, Father. Pour them through this crisis, that they will look back and their soul will cry out, thank the Lord in pain and sorrow and sickness and weakness, Lord bless them. Lord, somebody's trying to make a decision right now. They don't know whether to trust you. We ask you, Father God, to bless them to trust you. Bless their faith to grow, Father God. Bless their faith to grow in such a way that they will trust you, Father God, regardless of what goes on around them. And Lord, we ask you to keep the glory, all the honor and all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. 
Thank you so much for joining us tonight for our Bible study. Thank you for being a part. It is now offering time. It is time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial giving. It's time for us to give. We can give electronically or we can mail in our offering. If you want to mail it in, you can do so by mailing it in to the New Beginning Church, 503 Missouri City, Texas, 77459. That's New Beginning Church, PO Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. Or you can send your gifts in by Zelle. Our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting dot jesus at yahoo.com lifting dot jesus at yahoo.com the idea is as we lift jesus he will draw all men unto himself again thank you so much for your gifts thank you for blessing us we thank you for this time together in bible study please remember our obedience by faith is what god's looking for as we walk with him and we obey him, God blesses us. We thank God for this privilege of giving unto him. Father, we thank you for gifts. We thank you, Father, for every giver. We ask you to bless every giver. We ask you, Father God, to bless us as what we have given, we've given it unto you. Lord, we ask you to take these gifts and multiply them as you see fit. Amaze us, Father God, now, Lord, we pray, Father God, that every giver will be tremendously blessed. That every seed that is planted will come up 100 fold. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. And thank God. If you're on our prayer list, we want to continue to pray for you. We're praying for brother Joe Nathan Brownlee in Mississippi. We're praying for my daughter, Megan Davis. We're praying that you all come together and, and walk in unity. We're praying for Sister Tawana McKay and her family. And we're praying for the President of the United States, President Joe Biden. We're praying, Father God, for, we're asking God to bless our churches, churches that are open in Jesus' name. We're praying that that God bless men, women, boys, and girls to come to know him. There are far too many children dying, sen senseless death. We're, we're praying that God stay the hand of the devil. Father God, we thank you now, we bless your name. We lift up those names that we've called out and those that we have not. <clears throat> we pray for healing. We pray, Father God, for deliverance. We pray, Father, that you continue to bless and keep. Lord, bless churches. Churches that are standing in Jesus' name. Protect our churches. Protect it from the enemy. That no harm will come toward it. Bless equipment to work that our finances would not be drained. Bless us, Father God, that we will operate in wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Lord, we need you now. We pray that you bless us. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling. Unto him, the only wise and only true God. Unto him be power, be glory, and dominion. And we all say together, amen and amen. Now unto him who is able to keep us, Jesus the Christ. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for being a part of our service. We look forward to seeing you again for Sunday school at 9 a.m. every Sunday. We're at 4251 Shiramai Road, Houston, Texas, 77048. 9 a.m. Sunday school every Sunday, 1030 service every Sunday. 10.30 a.m., 9 o'clock a.m., and also same time for Bible study, 7.15 p.m.
p.m. every Wednesday. Thank you so much for being a part. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer. We are uniting the church, strengthening families, supporting schools, and empowering neighborhoods to impact the world as we are reaching souls by lifting Jesus. Jesus says, in I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. John 12 and 32. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer. <laughs>